Hello everyone, happy So What Day. It is Tuesday, August 10th. Already we are into August. This is just nutty. Um, so thank you for joining me today. We are going to be talking about some spooky scenes. Um, I got in the spirit and got a Halloween table runner out. Has anyone out there ever used a table runner as a wall hanging? Because I don't know why it never occurred to me before, but a table runner would look great hanging over your fireplace um, or over your couch. So why have I not decorated in this way before? At any rate, this is a project that I did around this time last year. Um, it's a pattern from Cluck Cluck Sew uh, for a quilt, and I actually transformed it into a table runner just by using three of the blocks instead of all of the blocks that were required for the quilt. And then I quilted it using sulky glowy thread. So it's got lots of spookiness to it, if you will. All right, so I got in the spirit to kind of welcome in Halloween, and I know it seems way early for Halloween, but yes, it's August 10th, so we're getting there. And if we're going to sew some things in time to decorate for Halloween, we better start now, right? So the first thing I want to talk about today is that it is webcast day. Today we have a webcast happening on our education platform, which is sewingonline.sulky.com. It is our Moonlight Serenade Mug Rug webcast with Desiree Havoc of Desiree's Designs. She will be joining us on the education platform at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. So in just a couple of hours, uh, you will all need to log in to sewingonline.sulky.com and join us for the webcast. It's about an hour long and Desiree will take us through this entire project. It is all done in the hoop of your embroidery machine. And not only is it a mug rug, but you can use the same design files to create a pillow or a very cute treat bag. And we have Lots of other inspiration to share with you for ways to use the same design collection for that mug rug and create other projects. So I love something that can give me, you know, double, triple, even quadruple duty, and I get lots of use out of it. And this design collection is no exception. So the kit that we're offering for the webcast today is enough fabric to make this mug rug but you could also stuff it and make a cute little pillow um, or, you know, add some more fabrics and turn it into a tote bag or create a large scale applique uh, for the focal point of a quilt, something like that. So we're going to go over how to do applique in the hoop of your embroidery machine and then do the entire project, including even adding the backing to it in your embroidery machine. So if you don't have an embroidery machine, this design collection is also available with SVG files. Those are the files you would use if you have a cutting machine. So if you happen to have a cutting machine, you can still join us and use those SVG files to create some spooky appliques and just use it in a different way. Um, but if you do have an embroidery machine, we'll be learning lots of tips and techniques for assembling this mug rug in the hoop. So really, really fun. We still have kits available, but they are very limited stock right now. The special price for the kit expires at midnight tonight. So it's only $39.99 right now. Up until midnight tonight, like I said, you will get that whole design collection, which includes the mug rug in two different sizes, as well as those SVG files. And those cute little motifs are also individual designs. So if you want to use them for some coordinating pieces, like a table runner or quilt, like I mentioned, you can use just those singular designs and get lots of use out of that collection. So within the kit, you will get the collection as well as everything you see here. All of these great sulky rayon threads, 
the soft and sheer that you need to build your in the hoop mug rug in the hoop and all of these great little fabrics. So you don't have to go hunting in your stash to find the Fabra, the Fabra, what? To find the perfect fabric. I think that's what I was trying to say for the ears or the perfect fabric for uh, your binding or backing or the, that perfect pumpkin fabric with the little dots on it. All of that is pre-cut and in your kit. Now it's pre-cut into little shapes that you will then cut per the design. So without giving too much away, um, it's a great, great deal on all of these products, only $39.99 while supplies last. All right, so that's happening at 2 p.m. today. I hope you will all join us. It's completely free to attend. And you get a little freebie design from Sulky just for registering. Um, it's a little witch's hat embroidery design, and it features a little bit of Sulky hollow shimmer thread for the little belt buckle that's on the witch's hat. So that's just a little bonus just for registering. So even if you can't join us live today, you can watch on demand at your convenience anytime after the live event ends. You can watch it tonight. You can watch it next week. You can watch it next year. It is all stored in your library on our education platform so that you can watch it or download your freebie at any time. So be sure to register. I put all the links for registering as well as purchasing the kit um, in the description of today's post. If you are not seeing those links, you may have to click that little see more button um, in the description of the post and then the whole description will pop out and you'll see all the things linked that I'm going to be talking about today and you can easily click on over. So um, I see lots of comments coming in. Hello, everyone. Oh, Debbie says she made a quilt out of the pattern that I used for the wall hanging. So super cute. And people are recognizing that pattern. So, all right. It's all pieced. These bats are all pieced quite nicely. Okay, anyways, let me go into another cute project. I thought I would bring this one up because um, it's another project from a webcast that we did with Desiree's Designs in the past. It's called the Steampunk pumpkin pouch. And this is such a really cute gift idea that you can make for the little ones in your life. I mean, make it for yourself as well. Um, but this guy comes in two little sizes and it features these cute little steampunk themed cogs for the eyes of the pumpkin. And this is another one that is done entirely in the hoop of your embroidery machine. You are even adding these zippers in the hoop. So that takes a lot of the guesswork and the technical uh, you know, needs that you might have if you are zipper challenged, adding a zipper in the hoop and using all of Desiree's tips to make sure that it's taped out of the way and that your needle's not going to touch it and all of those good things. It's just such a great, great, quick and easy gift that I also call like, assembly line style. So if you have lots of grandkids or lots of kids or neighbors um, or friends that you want to make this for, you can load it one time into your machine and then kind of do uh, one at a time and crank out a number of these in no time. So we still have kits for this webcast. We brought it back because it was so hugely popular. Don't you love that little zipper pull that little cog is a zipper pull that just adds to the steampunk vibe of this little pumpkin. So this kit comes with a CD that includes all of those designs that you need to create the pumpkin, as well as soft and sheer, all of those great fabrics that Desiree actually designed herself. The sulky threads, your little swivel clip and D-ring, and the zipper that you need. So everything included in this kit and we decided to put it on sale for you today again as well. So while you are buying up your Moonlight Serenade mug rug kit, add this one to your cart and then you'll be on your way to free shipping. So this one is, let's see, I think it's 30% off today. And that will expire at midnight tonight as well. 
So another great little kit you can make and get in the Halloween spirit of things. So talking about table runners and, you know, using them as wall art, um, using the, you know, the, there are so many different ways you can use a table runner. This is occurring to me. You know, I made one that featured some footballs, which I'll be going over um, in a couple of weeks on So What, but it's currently on the blog. And I draped it over a chair and it was so cute. <laughs> I thought you could drape these over a chair just like you were displaying a quilt. So lots of different ways to use a table runner. And you can also... Many of them, you can kind of cut the design in half and then make a placemat set out of it. So think outside the box with some of these great designs. All right, this is our brand new free project out today for you at sulky.com on our free projects page. This is um, a spooky, fun table runner. And Melanie Call of A Bit of Scrap Stuff she designed this for us using our new uh, haunting home. Hold on, let me make sure I get the name right. We have so many different Halloween names for things these days. Uh, so let me make sure I'm calling it the right thing for you all. It is, I have lots of tabs open here. <laughs> Bear with me a moment. I just want to make sure I'm calling it the right thing. I know it's in the description of today's post and it happens to be our giveaway today. Um, okay, it's the Quilting Halloween Haunt Palette. And this includes six spools of sulky uh, 50 weight cotton thread. Hold on, let me get it up here. And they are in the great Halloween colors that you need for tons of Halloween makes. You've got your pumpkin orange, your lime green, grays, um, bright orange, purple, black. All of those colors are so great for Halloween quilts, table runners, pieced projects, treat bags. So this is a great little Halloween sampler and it is our giveaway today. So one lucky viewer who is liking, commenting, sharing this post out today will be the winner of this great thread palette. So that is what Melanie used to piece together this entire uh, top of the table runner, as well as the great quilting that she added. And this is kind of a meandering free motion quilting stitch. Um, and I'll go over some other ideas that you could use to quilt the piece as well. So you can get all the instructions for this project on the uh, Sulky free projects page, which I linked to in the description of today's post. So you can click on over and get the whole thing printed out, have all the requirements in front of you for the yardage and the cutting and the assembly. But I'm going to go over it uh, right here for you. Uh, just so you have a little bit of an overview and then when you go printing out your instructions, you will, this will jog your memory of how things go together. So again, these are the blocks that you will be creating to assemble that cute table runner. And all of these uh, fabrics are from Riley Blake and it's a really adorable fabric collection. You can fussy cut the little motifs in the fabrics uh, for the uh, for the plain blocks, I guess I'll call them, that go with these pieced blocks. So if you are fussy cutting your motifs, just keep in mind you're going to need a little bit of extra fabric uh, for those portions of the blocks. So keep that in mind. So first off, we have to create these cute little pieced blocks. So it starts off with four half square triangles. When I'm doing half square triangles, I like to actually cut my squares first, put them right sides together, and then I actually make two half square triangles at the same time by stitching diagonally across those uh, squares. So what you wanna do to take into account your seam allowances is actually draw from corner to corner and that is going to be your cutting line. Then you wanna sew a quarter inch away from that line on either side. 
then cut down across corner to corner, open up your half square triangles and give it a good press. That way you're cutting two or stitching two really at the same time. So you can do that twice and you will have your four half square triangles. Then we uh, stitch basically a little border in between two of the half square triangles. And you can see that creates that upper edge and then that lower edge of the block. Then you'll create that sort of center border piece, um, which is kind of like a sashing piece, I guess you would call it. Um, and that makes the center of your block. So now you've got the top the middle, and then you would add the bottom. So that's how those blocks come together. Um, relatively simple, and you'll create a number of these blocks. And then like I said, you will fussy cut um, if you have a fabric you want to fussy cut. See those cute little motifs um, that are cut into the squares that make up the uh, table runner top and bottom. So you will alternate your pieced blocks with your, as I'm calling, plain square blocks uh, to start assembling the table runner top. Then you will add another row and offset those pieced blocks with the plain blocks. And then you'll want to add some borders, right? So you can choose a third fabric or this might be a fourth fabric at this point, uh, depending on how many fabrics you used for your piecing to create those great colors. Um, or you could use the same fabric you're using to fussy cut as those border pieces. It's entirely up to you. And then around that, we've got our wider border. So this really adds sort of a dimensionality to the table runner. I really love this look. So we've got like a frame around our piecing and then those outer border pieces. And then essentially the table runner top is complete and it's just a matter of, of sorry, let me get the right image here. It's just a matter of adding your, or creating rather your quilt sandwich, which would be your piece of batting and backing fabric. Then you get to quilt the piece however you like. So don't forget when you're creating your quilt sandwich to use the best thing on the planet, the Sulky KK2000, to spray baste your quilts or your table runner in this case to your batting and then use it for the backing as well. Now I have been told it is a better idea to spray the fabric rather than spray the batting when you are spray basting. Because sometimes, depending on the batting that you've chosen, the batting can soak up a lot more of the KK2000 than your fabric would. And then you'll find yourself needing to add more as you smooth your table runner top and backing to the batting. So, um, and you know what? There's a reason we have these tips out there because I tried it both ways and it does work much better, especially if you have a loftier batting to spray the back of your fabric rather than spraying the batting when you're creating your quilt sandwich. All right, so quilting. You can definitely use that 50 weight cotton thread for quilting. It's going to give you a little more subtle look for your quilting because it is a 50 weight thread. So it's a little bit thinner um, than a 30 weight that you might use for more pronounced quilting. So you can use uh, different colors from that Halloween Haunt uh, palette or you can get really fancy and switch it up and use one of our Poly Sparkle threads. This would really add to the fun, spooky scene that you're creating um, for your table runner. The Poly Sparkle is a 30 weight thread and it's a polyester that has flecks of metallic running through it. So it's easy to sew because it really sews just like a polyester thread, 
but you're getting the benefit of that metallic without it being too sort of too much, if you know what I mean. Um, and there are options where you could see some of the sparkle is tone on tone, some of the sparkle is gold, some of the sparkle is silver, and this is an assortment, um, one of our Halloween poly sparkle assortments, that has a mixture of both. And again, it has all those great sort of Halloween themed colors. So you can choose your own adventure, choose what works with your fabric combination, and it just goes so well with the colors in this Riley Blake collection. So it was a happy accident, really. Another thing you could do is when you're adding your binding, you could choose a decorative stitch and then use that poly sparkle to have a sparkly kind of serpentine stitch around your binding. And that would be really cool and add a really cool uh, sort of effect to your table runner. All right. Lots of people are saying, love the threads. <laughs> Okay, Evelyn's asking, does the sparkle thread need to be horizontal so it doesn't break? So the great thing about poly sparkle is that it sews very similarly to our poly deco thread, uh, which is a 40 weight thread. So the poly, poly sparkle is a little bit thicker than that, but the flex of metallic um, allow you to sew it much easier than, let's say, a sulky original metallic. Original and poly sparkle are both round threads, whereas hollow shimmer and sliver are flat metallic threads. Now, when you're sewing with a flat metallic thread, you have to make sure that your uh, thread spool is horizontal and positioned so that the thread uh, unwinds facing your threading mechanism, and your needle. And what we recommend for that is our thread director. These are available at sulky.com. You put it on your machine uh, so that the spool pin is facing you. That way, when your thread spool goes on it and you go to thread your needle, the thread is coming out so that there is no twisting. It's completely flat on its way to the needle. And this just slips on your existing spool pin or your bobbin winder so that it's an extension of your spool pin. So this I recommend if you're working with hollow shimmer or sliver or if you have trouble with original metallic, because when your spool pin's going up and down, or slightly this way, or even just horizontal, but facing the needle this way, do you see all the twists I'm getting as the thread comes off of the spool? So when you're working with metallic, it's a little bit more abrasive than a cotton or polyester thread. And so all those twists are going to basically build up and cause all this tension, especially if you're sewing at a high speed. And over time, you're going to get so many twists that it'll just break uh, while you're sewing or on its way to the needle even. So that is why Evelyn's asking, does this poly sparkle need to be horizontal to avoid all of that undue tension? Well, I find that poly sparkle is actually the easiest metallic thread to sew because it does not behave in the same way as a original metallic, a hollow shimmer, or a sliver. It does not produce all of that undue tension on its way to the needle. Now, if you are finding that yours does because of the orientation of your spool pin, then try out the thread director just to make sure you don't have those problems do some test stitching, um, and see how your machine performs with it. But I find that I don't need to make any modifications using that thread, even using it for portions of machine embroidery designs. You do need to make sure that you are adjusting for the 30 weight thread. So you need a larger needle eye. So choose a 9014 needle for that poly sparkle. 
Um, and you may need to slow your machine down a little bit when you're doing machine embroidery. Also, if you choose a machine embroidery design that's very dense or has lots of fill stitches to it, it may not be suitable for that heavier weight thread unless in the description of that design, it says heavy or uh, suitable for 30 weight, or you could contact the digitizer and say, hey, can I use 30 weight thread for this design? Um, or you could just do a test stitch out and see how it's performing. For satin stitch edging, um, I haven't had a problem with poly sparkle, even if it's a design usually uh, digitized for 40 weight, but a heavy fill, let's say it's, you know, a bow tie on a cat or something, and the bow tie is all heavy fill stitches that are close together, that's probably not going to work for the poly sparkle. So you can use an educated guess, do a test stitch out, see how it performs. Um, but for the most part, it's a very easy metallic thread to work with, especially when quilting. You can lengthen your stitch a little bit, which you might want to do with quilting anyway, depending on the type of quilting that you're doing. Um, but when you're using a heavier weight thread, a little bit longer stitch um, will give you a little bit more room for that thread to groove and uh, space for the thread to fit into the fabric fibers while you're sewing. All right, so I'm sorry that my phone keeps going off. I put it on silent and um, apparently it, it does not like me. So I apologize for the sound effects. Okay. Uh, Andrea is asking, would you wind it on the bobbin as well? So for quilting, I would use it in the bobbin. Only wind your bobbin about halfway um, and wind it at a little bit slower speed so that you don't get undue tension um, that could result in winding a bobbin super fast with any metallic thread. But on a quilt, I want to see that beautiful sparkle on the wrong side as well. So I would use it in the bobbin. For machine embroidery, I would use a sulky bobbin thread or a sulky poly light thread that kind of matches or coordinates with the thread I'm using in the needle. So that produces a nice balanced stitch. You don't want to use that 30 weight in the bobbin when you're doing machine embroidery. It will just be too dense and too much, uh, too, too much density for your needle to try to penetrate while it's creating the design and creating those stitches. Okay. Did you say the weight on the poly sparkle is 40 weight? No, it is a 30 weight thread. All right. Lots of people loving the poly sparkle. It's so pretty. Anne wants to know, do you use the thread director on your Epic? Yes, I have a designer Epic 2 and I use it on my um, spool pin that is closest to the needle. Um, and it's just so great. What a great invention that thread director is. Mariana says, I love the thread director. I got one for every machine. It works all the time. So awesome. Okay. Marilyn says, I used poly sparkle on placemats and just used it the way I use regular thread. So exactly. It really performs very well um, as you would expect a traditional polyester thread to perform. So Vicki says, is there a Halloween poly sparker, sparkle sampler? There is. There are two actually. And I linked to them in the description of the post today. So this is the six pack sampler. And then we also have a 12 pack sampler. So the six pack, or excuse me, the 12 pack includes the threads that are in the six pack with an additional six threads paired with it. So check out both of those and see if you want all 12 or just the six pack of the Halloween sampler. Okay, which number in the needle pack is the eye size? Um, I assume you mean, is it the 90 or the 14 that determines the eye size? And 
I actually don't know. So all of us from Sulky who are in on the Facebook Live, please let me know what number that represents. Um, great question. I'm always learning something new on the so what. Um, I hope you are too. Oh, Vicky says it's 90. Thank you. Thank you, Vicky. <laughs> oh, Janie says, I'm surprised that the grocery stores are already putting Halloween candy out. It's August. I know. And then it'll be Christmas like next week. It's crazy. Um, now from a sewing perspective, it's a great idea to get started or at least get these projects in our queue uh, because, you know, it takes a little bit of time to schedule in our sewing, our quilting. If we send our stuff to a long armor, uh, you know, we have to get on their schedule as well if we're making a whole quilt. So it's a great idea to start in August, especially for those sewing projects. But I agree with you. Don't give me the Halloween candy yet. <laughs> I don't need it yet. Okay. All right. Kathleen says, I've used it since it came out and it's perfectly sewn metallic thread. So yes, if you have trouble in the past with metallics or if you want to start and have a great experience, start out with the poly sparkle. You can work your way up to those hollow shimmer and sliver and have really, really cool thread effects in your quilts, table runners, even bags. Top stitch using that sliver thread on like a jean jacket It'd be so cool. And you have a little bit of sparkle um, added to your garment even. So, all right. Okay, if I have not gotten to your questions, because there are a lot that have come in, keep them coming because we do have sulky support on the chat, getting back to a lot of you. Um, I appreciate it so much. And okay, the designs in the squares on your table runner, are they fabric or embroideries? So they are actually the fabric. So the cute little ghouls and goblins and kids dressed up for Halloween, those are all part of the fabric design. So you would fussy cut those, uh, meaning centering those within your dimensions for your cutting, and then have really cute motifs um, all sprawled out on your table runner. So if you have a cute pumpkin fabric or bat fabric or something like that, fussy cut it by centering one of those motifs in the square and put cute little motifs all along your table runner. Okay, do you recommend using a metallic needle with poly sparkle? You can, and it will work. Um, I use a top stitch needle when I'm using the poly sparkle. Um, I find it works great, and I use it for the um, embroidery designs that I create because for most of the time, when I'm working with poly sparkle, um, I have a little bit heavier weight fabric with it, um, or I stabilize my fabric a little bit extra to give it a little bit more weight so that that heavier weight thread has a little more to grab onto. And so a top stitch 9014 for me works well with the poly sparkle, but a metallic needle, especially for higher speed embroideries, um, that would work as well. Everyone's asking for the table runner I put on the wall. So there's a blog post about the pattern that I used and how I modified it for the table runner at sulky.com. You can search for table runner or bat and you will find it that way. Go to blog.sulky.com. It's a cluck cluck sew quilt pattern that I started with for the blocks and then I just used it for a table runner rather than a quilt. So, all right. Speaking of our cute little curated thread collections, we have another Halloween thread collection that is curated out of our sulky 12 weight cotton. So the 12 weight cotton petites, these are 50 yards on a spool, and we really recommend using these for handwork. So if you like to do cross stitch, hand embroidery, um, sashiko work, or big stitch quilting, 
Uh, the 12 weight cotton petites are great for that. And this is another bundled collection for Halloween featuring all those great Halloween colors. And I'm showing you that because we have another great project on our free projects page. Uh, this is the trick or treat wall hanging. And this was all done with machine embroidery using 12 weight cotton. That's right. You can use heavy weight uh, threads in machine embroidery if the embroidery design was digitized that way. And this one was digitized specifically for the 12 weight cotton petites. So that trick or treat design, you would load into your machine, use the 12 weight thread in the needle, and a bobbin weight in the bobbin. So a 60 weight bobbin thread or a 60 weight poly light thread. Um, and this, I just used the white thread, but it would be really cool and glowy as well. Um, and then I did a, a longer stitch for those outline um, sort of quilting stitches that go across the entire wall hanging. So this is a great little project for your front door. Um, would be, again, really cool to add glowy to that center design. Um, it wouldn't be as pronounced um, in the daytime because it is digitized for a 12 weight thread. So if you used a glowy, which is a 40 weight thread, uh, you would have a little, let's say not enough fill, um, but it would still look cool. Um, I don't think that, you know, when it's glowing, you'd still be able to read trick or treat. Um, so that wouldn't be a problem, but your stitches wouldn't be as close together. Um, anyway, hopefully that makes sense. Anyways, also, if you don't have an embroidery machine, you could still get this free project and there's a handwork printable you can use to either free motion over the top or do by hand using uh, hand embroidery techniques. Um, for the latter, you could print your design onto Sulky Stick and Stitch. Stick and Stitch is a water soluble sticky back stabilizer that you can run through your printer. So download this free design, print it out onto Sulky Stick and Stitch, stick it right to your fabric right side, and then sew through your layers. You can also use that as your free motion template. So you could put that on, load up your machine with your 12 weight thread, lower your feed dogs and free motion that design as well. So lots of different options for this, all the dimensions and everything that you need for cutting and embroidery either by hand or machine are included with that free project as well um, on our free projects page. So Cindy says, I made that trick or treat project last year and it turned out fabulous. So cute. So that's wonderful. Also, Patricia is asking, is using glowy similar to using metallic? Um, actually using glowy um, is more similar to using rayon or poly deco. It's a 40 weight polyester thread and it just happens to glow in the dark. Um, you could use your 9014 needle for that because it does have a little bit of a coating to it, um, but it's not so much so that it's going to twist and wind and break on you like a metallic might. The thing with Glowy is you cannot touch your hot iron to it. So after your embroidery is complete, um, for those of you who like to give it a press from the wrong side, you do not want to do that with the Glowy because the thread could kind of melt together and then you, you lose all your definition of all of those passes of thread. It'll just become like a mass on your fabric. So keep your iron and heat away from it. Just iron kind of around the design to get rid of your hoop markings if you have those, um, but keep your iron um, and be very aware of where the tip of your iron is so that it doesn't run into those stitches after your embroidery is complete. So another uh, cool thread that we have that's really great for Halloween is called Cry, C-R-Y. 
This stands for coated reflective yarn. This one does sew out a little bit more akin to a metallic thread. Um, it's a little bit, mm, feels a little bit more textury than a traditional uh, rayon or polyester thread. And it is reflective. So if you sew this into a design or uh, last year I had a purchased costume for my son and I sewed over all of the exposed seams along the shoulder, the front of it, the cape that it came with. I added all of these seams use or all of these top stitching lines using cry so that when he was out trick or treating, he would be reflective at night. So any light that came across from headlights or porch lights or flashlights, all of a the sudden there's my son and you can see him on the street. So it's a really, really cool effect you can use for something you're going to hang on your front door. Every time the cars pass by at night, they'll see the design or the top stitching or the quilting uh, reflect off of that light. So here's kind of what it looks like. It almost looks like it's glowing, uh, but it's reflective instead. And this is another project that we have on our free projects page. It is a little pinafore or apron that you can create to get in the Halloween spirit or even to answer the door in on Halloween night. And it features that reflective thread. So under those cute little pumpkins, um, all of that fill stitch was done using the cry. And then the little swirls that are around the pumpkin were also done in the cry thread. Now make sure you're not using it in the bobbin because you don't wanna waste this beautiful thread effect on something that will never be seen. So again, pair that with a sulky 60 weight bobbin thread or even the poly light would work as well. You could use a gray or silver poly light to kind of go along with that cry thread. So a really, really cool thread you can use for those Halloween projects that you are creating. Again, I'll show it to you what it looks like here. So isn't that neat? I just think it's so unique um, and a really, really neat thing. You could add it to this table runner if you're hanging it up um, and you know run it along the length of your door like a front door hanging with a little bit of reflection um, around those bats maybe if you want to quilt in the ditch of, you know, around your bats, uh, that would be a really cool, cool effect to add to it. Um, Kathleen is saying, is the apron a kit or a pattern? We don't have a kit for the apron, but you can head on over to the Sulky Free Project page and you'll find all the how-tos that you need. And it's called Pinafore, Halloween Pinafore. And you'll get the pattern for that. Is the cry only in gray? Yes, it is only in that one spool of gray um, and it's probably got something to do with how it's manufactured and how it does reflect. Um, so it will look gray in the daytime. So keep that in mind. So something black and white or I did a um, Darth Vader patch that I actually did as a front door hanging. It was a freestanding embroidery and I did all of the perimeter stitching using the cry thread and a satin stitch. So even if it doesn't really coordinate with the colors in your main design, you can use it kind of as an outline um, and it works, somehow it works. So, all right, loving the apron. So, and the apron would be a cute costume as well. You could just say that you are, you know, a pumpkin fairy or something like that. Also, you could change up the fabrics and the design in the apron and turn it into a different type of costume. So lots of different options for that. All right, Vicki says, so cute. All right, again, for all of you who are commenting, liking, sharing today's post, our giveaway is this great six pack of 50 weight cotton thread. This is our Halloween palette and it has six of these great, great colors that you will use for 
pretty much every single project that I talked about today. So, all right. Well, I am going to get ready for our Moonlight Serenade mug rug webcast. Again, that's happening at 2 p.m. Eastern time, so a little over an hour. Um, so everyone who's joining me today, give me a thumbs up. Um, really appreciate you not only spending your so what time with me, but also uh, your time later today during the webcast where we will we welcome Desiree Havoc of Desiree's Designs. She's going to give us all of her great tips and techniques. She designed this after all, so what better way to connect with the designer, ask your questions, get the best-in-class education experience straight from the designer herself. So be sure to register for the webcast, again, happening in a little over an hour. All you have to do is give us your email so that you can then store this event in your library and have your own personalized experience on our education platform. So register for the event, grab up the kits while you still can. They are only $39.99 until midnight tonight. Oops, that's another great thing you can create using those designs. Here's what's in the kit. You'll also get that design collection, like I mentioned, which includes your in the hoop design files featuring two sizes of mug rugs, also the individual design motifs as embroidery designs and the SVG files. So if you have a cutting machine, those files will create your cute little appliques for your mug rug. So there it is again. How cute is this? This would make a really great gift for uh, friends, coworkers. Um, I don't know if you all do booing um, at your place of work or amongst your friends or neighbors, but this would be a really cute thing to boo someone with um, and, you know, add a cute little Halloween mug to it and maybe some homemade treats and you have a great little gift idea. So I hope you will all join us in about an hour. Be sure to go on and register. Um, Patricia says, where do we register? So in the description of today's post, you might have to click that little see more button. It'll say register for the webcast here. Click on over, fill out your information, and then you can join us at 2 p.m. Eastern time today. So lots of you saying that you are ready today. And I am ready too. So grab yourself a beverage and I'll see you in a little while for the Moonlight Serenade mug rug. And don't forget to tune in next week for another So What. Um, and we'll be going over another cute project and great sulky products. So again, thank you for joining me today. And I'll see you in a little while for Moonlight Mug Rug webcast with Desiree's Designs. Have a great day, everyone.